Hello, I am Sydney. And I'm Melanie. And this is Drontanius. And will my lovely assistant roll up some categories for me? I would love to. First category. We are doing movies slash cartoons. Danny Phantom? Danny Phantom? Really? Okay. Hey, man, don't knock it. <laughs> okay. I I've, like that show. I've never watched that show. You, Let's well, go down to characters. I would say you could watch it with me, but I don't think you'd like it. Oh, okay. It's very childish. And we are going to do an OC. A Danny Phantom OC. Oh, boy. All right. All right. Do you have one in mind? Are you going to... I don't, but it's going to be a ghost for sure. Okay. Just because it's so, the easiest OC to make. So tell me a little bit about Danny Phantom, because oh, okay. there's, so, there's like a sleeper fandom out there for Danny Phantom, and I come across the content every once in a while. Oh, yeah. Uh, but explain to me, he's dead. So Danny Phantom, he was just 14 when his parents built a very strange machine. <laughs> it was a gate into a world unseen, oh and he's going to catch them all because he's Danny Phantom. Uh, when it didn't quite work, his parents just quit, but then Danny took... I, can't, I should stop, I'm pretty sure we'll get content oh lagged. My God. Anyway, his parents built a portal into the ghost zone. Okay. He, uh, he made it work, but it kind of killed him right. in the process, yeah. so it made him half ghost. So the whole show I'm is... I'm sorry, half ghost? Yeah, he's half ghost. Some They call him the half -a. <laughs> Wait, how, how do you... How are you half ghost? I don't fucking know. It's a cartoon. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, how long ago did you watch this cartoon? Um, well, it was on mi from middle school through high school, so... And you remember the theme song. Well, I was watching it recently, okay. so... Okay, okay. I mean, I can't really throw stones because I remember the entirety of the Pokemon theme song, so... Yeah, yeah. including the second verse that including no one Including the exists. second verse. Yeah, I don't know how I ended up learning that. I'm just that good. But anyway. yeah, so his whole thing is he hunts ghosts that escape the ghost zone puts them back blah 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 it's a kid's show but it's good and i really like the content that comes from the fans like there's a lot of trans danny content and like considering that there's actually some hints to it oh interesting well i mean if you're looking like mm -hmm. there's an episode where a genie who's like granting people's wishes is like oh surely there's something i want and she reaches for his chest and then he's like hey back off so a lot of people took that as a oh hey Maybe he's trans, and that's what he wants, is uh, to change his body. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. The things you can find if you look hard enough. And if oh. you're queer and you work super you're hard super to see yourself. To find, yeah. No, no kidding. Well, speaking of finding yourself, do you want to talk about another panel we went to? Yeah. Uh, Emerald City Comic Con? More Emerald City Comic Con. So this one is called Am I Really Playing a Role? Identity Exploration in RPGs. And this was moderated by the very handsome Dr. B. And uh, I hope yeah. he never hears this recording, because... If he does, we think you're very handsome. He's, he was very handsome and very smartly dressed. Um, he can be my doctor any day. <laughs> Says the gay woman. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was basically about how... Again, this is tabletop role-playing games we're talking about here. Uh, just how people, through playing these different characters, how they explore their identities, how they come to terms with different parts of themselves through the, these characters. Um, and Dr. B actually uses role-playing games as a means to help um, people, his clients, work through their own, uh, I, don't, I don't know, a, a correct term to use. You're very, very in-depth. Basically, Itch work Issues? I mean, I was, I was looking for a more delicate term than issues. I mean, that's what I use But I for. suppose that works, too. Yeah. Um, you absolutely work through your issues when you play D&D. I do. D &D. It's true. It's 100% um, true. I play characters infused with my own insecurities and my aspirations. And I play characters I want to be. I play characters who are damaged in the ways I am damaged, and just using that as a way to navigate those things, um, which is kind of what I also used roleplay, just forum chat roleplay to do as well, but that's another thing. Um, that's how we met. That is how we met, but this is not a, uh, a story on how we met. Um, 
Was there anything in the panel that stuck out to you? Um, very mostly just like how charismatic the panelists were. Mm -hmm. Because we went to a couple D&D panels, and I would say they were the most interesting people. And my bias tells me that it's because they're all queer. Were they all queer? I'm, like, pretty sure. They might have been. I mean, they were definitely very not white, very they were, not white males. They were not what people think of when they think mm -hmm. of the stereotype of D&D right. nerds. And again, I should have looked up their names. Um, they're all out there on, I think, fairly popular... You remember Dr. B because you think he's hot. And I follow him on Twitter. <laughs> um, but there are people like... They're writers for D&D &D and D&D &D Beyond. They're, uh, they are hosts for D&D podcasts affiliated with D&D Beyond or Wizards of the Coast, I think, themselves. Um, so, like, they're out there. It was Emerald City Comic Con 19... Uh, if you really wanted to, you could go find them. I remember Hadil, because Hadil was in another uh, panel I went to. She is hilarious. I think she is with D&D Beyond. Yeah, um, she's an official writer. Yeah. But I think a lot of common themes were them talking about race for the most part. Yeah. Um, I'm remembering it better now. Not all of them were people of color. I think it was a little half and half. But those that were people of color talked a lot about how they use D and D to explore race, race, racial issues, or how, or even just to work out their frustrations yeah. at like the microaggressions I they suffer. I remember the one gentleman. Um, his character was the character he was talking about was a lawful evil diplomatic rogue. Yes. I'm glad you remember the exact phrasing because I was struggling there for a second. It's like so hard to forget. But he's he's an evil character and in this part of his campaign, his party ran across a slave ring and the party, I guess, was expected to buy slaves or transport slaves and this player is black and from the deep south, if I remember correctly. Oh, and yeah. so because him and, uh, he was, I believe, Hadil were both, like... They were both born in the South, I think. Yeah. Um, but for him specifically, he was. He, it was just a moment of he could not separate himself from his character, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, and his character decided that they were going to dismantle the slave trade in this city and killed probably half the party uh, in doing so because, boy, were they not supposed to do that. But it was just a moment of he could not forgive this. But what was more striking was afterwards when his fellow players were asking why. And it's like, isn't that obvious? It, like... You would think it's obvious, but coming from the South and his other... I think he specifically said that he was like the one black person in his town. Yeah. The other being his brother. Yeah. So the fact that he was so isolated in that... Like, all of the people he was playing with were likely white. Like, of course, they wouldn't think that it's that upsetting, but they don't realize that, hey, this is just a story for you, but for me, this is my history. This is, like... This is not that... Still big. facing the consequences. Yeah, exactly. Um, so things like that. It was a very interesting, interesting panel, and I'm very happy to see that it isn't a one-off thing. Um, Dr. B goes to a bunch of conventions and holds this panel well and he specifically has a clinic for like gamers and mm -hmm. that's like such a good group to work with because mm -hmm. you know i don't know if it's specifically gamers but he uses his therapy is through playing these games um so it might not necessarily be that they are all gamers but they are willing to try this method yeah um and it, he works with a lot of uh students young students so it's definitely a good way i think to to engage them oh well, because it gives you good skills critical mm -hmm. thinking like writing like mm -hmm. being able to take risks in a safe environment being collaborative respecting other people yeah yeah the biggest thing for kids especially is just like being able to take risks, mm -hmm. like being able to do stuff without worrying about real consequences. Yeah. That's why kids like the Minecrafts. So another another panel. You didn't go to this one. I and I forget what panel you went to instead. I didn't go to a panel. I went to wait in line for boats and boners. Oh, was that it? 
Because you're talking about again? decolonizing D&D, right? I am talking right? about decolonizing Yeah, because um, I was afraid that they would cap the line, and I desperately needed to see Erica Moen. Mm-hmm. So, and laugh at her butt jokes. <laughs> that was a pretty good panel. We can talk about that in a little bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I went to decolonizing D&D, and... What I wish, because I do not have the history background, what I wish they had done at the beginning of the panel is talk about what do they mean by colonization? What is the broad definition, broad set of ideals? Um, and I know that's probably a lot of stuff to unpack very briefly just to like set the scene for this panel. Um, but do you want to, Sydney, do you know anything about the term colonization other than what we've been taught in the American uh, education system. So, like, instead of the lies they tell us. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> so, colonization is mostly when a bunch of white people showed up, unwelcome, and destroyed other people's cultures because they don't like things that are different, brought tons of disease, and killed anyone who didn't assimilate. Like I assholes. You, I have a feeling you have very strong feelings about this, Sydney. <laughs> well, considering that my family comes like from Cherokee roots as mm-hmm. well as Irish, it's mm-hmm. like, hey, I don't get, I don't know anything about that culture because it was destroyed. Yeah, yeah. like my family was so desperate mm-hmm. to assimilate that I didn't get to learn any of it. And it's mm-hmm. like I'm missing a vital part. So, but I'm also very white. So, well, I have a very as a as a person coming from a Filipino background that that is a very similar uh, story uh, considering the history of colonization that the Philippines has gone through in past history, recent history Um, but anyways (laughs) that is another thing that I am not prepared to discuss Um, the panel decolonizing D&D was mostly focused on subverting the western centric narratives that are written into the rule books written into the pre-made campaigns um and even just like written into the way monsters are described mm-hmm. or the way different races are described um well because a lot of D is based on the books of J.R. tolkien and mm-hmm. people aren't gonna like hearing this but he was very racist. Oh, he was very racist. Like, as, a, as a fan in my young childhood of his works, looking back now, it was just, you just kind of stop and go, huh, yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't very good. Oh, yeah. And unfortunately, people, white people, don't examine these biases, no. so they just continue writing like mm-hmm. that. And it's like, but why? When you can pull from, like, so many unique cultures right. and ideas well, and like expand even looking at fairy tales the words they use are very coded oh yeah um fair why is fair synonymous with white synonymous with goodness why is dark and black and all of these things synonymous with bad things um so it's pervasive through a lot of media um but yeah you just never stop and think well why is the language this way but um so when you're white you don't really think right about it. you don't think about it like me. and growing up in that culture you don't think about it like i grew up yeah um and it's only until recently that i got educated i started listening to more uh voices and realized oh my gosh yeah that is totally coded against people of color or it's totally co- coded um ableism um, mm-hmm. and a bunch of other things so the Ways to subvert these assumptions that we have. Um, Basically, this panel just said, question everything. Just every little detail. So specifically, it's like, why is this race evil? What, how are they coded? What are the words used to describe them? Are, is, could it potentially be POC coded? Are they evil because they are dark skinned like the drow? or because they're trolls, because they're not human, and the human standard for a long, long time was white. Um, And so just kind of questioning all these things. So why is the race evil? Why are good races white-coded? Why is violence always the answer? Specifically is something that they focused on a lot, was violence in in these quests. Not only to remove the tendency to murder murder hobo but just because violence is kind of boring when you just 
take a big stick or a pointy object and smash it against somebody. Like, think about games that are really, really popular right now. Like, just like Stardew Valley, Harvest Moon, Mm -hmm. like, all those kind of games. People don't always need to kill to be entertained. No. Yeah, and and these panelists were specifically saying how, like, oh, instead of murdering this person, we actually befriended them. And now they are a permanent fixture in our game because they are an NPC who gives us deals on items or what have you. Um, and also talking about how, as DMs, they've specifically written scenarios where if they kill somebody if there is violence there is consequence yeah so it encourages them to kind of stop and think okay how else should i do this maybe i should talk to them first instead yeah that's of a listening. that's a great addition to fifth edition mm-hmm. a great add-on to fifth edition is rewarding players for not doing combat mm-hmm. yeah because there's a bunch of other more interesting ways to solve um to solve conflict yeah. Instead of just violence. So uh-huh. we are actually hitting our time mark, but we definitely like to continue this conversation in our next episode because it's a good one. Oh, we're almost done. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, we're then. almost done with that that particular one. Okay, I just didn't mean to cut you off. No, it's fine. Um, I guess the only other things uh, you already talked about it already, but just drawing on stories outside of your own. Your own. Yeah. Right. So. And especially. Well, I mean, specifically for white folk who are writing. Yeah. It's like, fucking explore shit. Try and, new things. And do your research. Be diligent. Don't Speak just cherry pick. Yeah. Do your best to be respectful. Um, and pay people when they help you. Mm-hmm. Like, if you, wa- if you want to do sensitivity readers or whatever, pay them. But yeah. So that was, it was a very interesting anecdotal uh, panel that was hard to capture in the moment but that was kind of the gist of that panel and i thought it was a very interesting concept and the audience was primarily white which i thought was very interesting it was a lot of people trying to be better trying to be better which i really appreciate yeah um, so i feel like this conversation is kind of weird being put over top of a danny phantom oc drawing well you know <laughs> which that's is very, how it is which is very on brand oh, for me it's a little rat it's, it's a, a rat, rat ghost who is like a vet tech, tech who Aww. has a fondness for rodents oh that's cute yeah because i like rodents does uh does your oc have a name no all right i'm not <laughs> I that was, i was just curious if you're able to kind of think of one real quick no i'm not that creative right. but yeah so we will see you guys in the next episode of john Tanius. bye